Good to have each one of you here today, and uh, it's not even Easter Sunday, right? And uh, here, here we are. And uh, God's got good things for you this morning. I just want to say thank you for your generosity that not only allows us to do the incredible outreach that Josh mentioned uh, across the street and across the world, of course, with missionary support that we give to over 20 different missionaries. Uh, and also, just recently, we're able to uh, receive over $20,000 to give to Project Rescue to free women and children from sexual trafficking. Somebody up. Uh, through a match that was incredible, and so thank you for that. But I just also want to say, uh, I was thinking about this. I was just sitting down here getting ready to come up. That uh, thank you for helping pay the light bill uh, too, uh, because uh, how many appreciate the lights and the sound and everything that goes along with it, and the staff of our church as well. So all that happens because of you. So thank you for your generosity. How many have ever felt stressed? Uh, like even today, maybe, I don't know. But uh, we're talking about mental health issues, things like that in this series. And uh, I don't know, maybe you felt some pressure this week. Maybe uh, pressure's just kind of part of life anymore for some of you. Uh, just starting out today, I want to read a scripture that some of you may really identify with, unfortunately. This guy wrote this in Job chapter 9, verse 25. My days go faster than a runner. They fly away without my seeing any joy. Boy, aren't you glad you came to church today, right? Uh, maybe that's kind of how you felt lately. Or you go through seasons where you can feel this way. And, and it's easy, I, I feel like, to get overwhelmed. Uh, for one thing, there's just so many choices, right? There, there's so many decisions to make. I, I remember hearing how, uh, like when I was a kid, how life was going to get so simple. <laughs> Anybody remember that? Where, where it's just going to be so simple because we're just going to have all these, uh, you know, automated things in our life. And, and so our lives, when we got older, was just going to be so, so simple. And it is so, so not, right? It is not simple. As a matter of fact, I feel like it's gotten more complicated uh, over time with all the options, all the messages, all the social media platforms. Maybe you just feel overwhelmed trying to keep your Instagram account up to date and some things like that. But pressure, pressure is just kind of a part of life in a sense, and we're going to talk about that. Um, but what it does do, if, if nothing else, pressure does this it reveals what's inside. Think about it. Pressure reveals what's inside. If you want to know what's inside the toothpaste tube, put some pressure on it. And, and the same thing in your life and mine, for good or for bad, pressure is the great revealer. And uh, here, here's how life works for us, is we are spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. That's how God created us. Now, your spirit, my spirit, has a desire to connect with God. That's why we like coming to church, right, and, and worshiping, because our spirit connects with God, and then, and then we get everybody's, you know, spirit connecting with the spirit of God, but your body does not. Your body says, stay home in bed. 
your, your body says, hey, don't get all excited, you know, uh, you don't need to sing, you don't need to clap, you don't need to get involved in this. And then the soul is like the swing vote, okay? Because what happens is, is however your soul is doing, you know, in your emotions, in your will, uh, you know, that sways whether or not you're going to get in contact and connected to the living God today. Because your spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so what happens is, is sometimes the flesh wins, the, the body wins, and, and sometimes the spirit wins. So how can we get our spirit to win more? That's really what we're talking about. Soul care, let me say this. Soul care, which is what we're gonna talk about today, is your job. As a matter of fact, turn to the person next to you and say, it's your job. It's your job. I didn't tell you what to say with that, okay? <laughs> Some of you are trying to take advantage of this moment here. But, but soul care, soul care is your job. It is not your spouse's job to take care of your soul. It is not somebody else's responsibility. It is your responsibility to take care of your soul. And so today, I want us to focus on this swing vote as to whether or not we're going to follow the Spirit or we're going to follow our flesh. And we're going to call it soul care. Our friends at Care to Change, which again, we're going to have a resource at the end of this series to put in your hands an incredible resource of all the different things that you can do to help you mentally and spiritually along the way because Care to Change is uh, a part of our church in connection with counseling and things like that, and, and they're very Christian or faith-based. But they call it, and, and this is what the psychological term for this is, is self-care. And maybe you've heard that. Or, or maybe you've gone to a counseling session and the counselor said, you need to do more self-care. You're caring for other people or you're carrying the burdens of others and you're wearing yourself out. And as a result, you feel overwhelmed. You feel like, I'm the only one carrying this. I'm the only one lifting this. I'm the only one holding this family together. I'm the only one holding, you know, this marriage together. I'm the only one, you know, supporting this family. I'm the only one making things happen. And so... I want us to look at how we can get away from that, how we can care for ourselves, how the Bible talks about this and talks about pressure, not in a negative way, but to flip it and to use it in a positive way. So I want us to spend a few moments today talking about getting over stress, getting over Stress In James chapter 1, verse 2, this is probably not a scripture you have on your refrigerator, okay? I'll just put it that way, and you'll understand it as we read it. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Yes! <laughs> Right? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Having a rough week. It's so tough. I got, oh my gosh, there's another issue, another problem. <sighs> Hallelujah. Right? <laughs> it's how you feel all the time, right? But here's here's the biblical principle here, evidently. And, and this is James, the brother of Jesus, talking. He says, pressure 
can produce. Pressure can produce some things. You know, maybe you enjoy orange juice. Or how about some lemonade shakeups at the state fair? Come on, somebody. <laughs> right? It takes pressure to make those. And, and James says the pressure in our lives can actually produce some great things in us. I, it's funny. It, just maybe do this as an experiment. If you get around successful people who you, you look up to and you think, wow, I wonder how they did that. I wonder how they you know, got a family like that. I wonder how they got a business like that. I wonder how this happened. And, and you're intrigued by what, what's like the secret sauce. What, what is it in your life? You speak to them. You ask them about it. Here's what I have found most often comes up. They will tell you about their greatest challenge. They will tell you about, oh, I remember the day when we just about couldn't get our property purchased. And this problem came in, and this problem came in, and this problem, and we overcame it. And that's how we have the company that we have today. It's interesting, because you would think they'd tell you about their greatest success, that they would tell you about, oh, you know, I just skated right through this, and it was awesome. But that's not what they talk about. They will often talk about their hardest time, their most difficult situation, the, the most pressured problem, and, and, and how they overcame. See, two people can have the same circumstance, and one sinks and one sails. Same circumstance, but it produces different things. And Paul, we're going to look at a passage of Scripture today, and we're going to focus on another prescription, okay, that Paul, the Apostle Paul, who used to hate Christians, but then he became a Christian. And his whole life was radically changed and transformed, wrote over half of the New Testament, and this guy was a brainiac. He, he just was very intuitive, very sharp. And yet, he had some of the most difficult circumstances of anybody that you'll find in the Bible. Some of the most horrific conditions, horrible situations that, that happened to the Apostle Paul. But yet, he writes to us, with some of the most encouraging things. And, and so it's like when you talk to successful people and they say, well, here, here's how I got through that. Here's how I got through that difficult time. And so in Colossians chapter four, if you have a Bible, Colossians chapter four, we're gonna look at verse two because this is written not from the Hyatt Regency in Maui, Okay. That's not where this is written from. The presidential suite, you know, there at the corner of the building, you know, with, I don't know, 3,000 square feet or whatever. You know, that, that's not where this is written from. This is written from prison and not air conditioned and central heat with a gymnasium and different things. This, this is like a hellhole, if you will, that, that Paul is writing from. And here is what he says. A guy who knows pressure, here's what he says. Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Three things that Paul talks about here that I want us to spend the rest of our time talking about today. The first one, and maybe you need to write down, if you're gonna get over stress, is to pray diligently. Pray diligently. Pray with devotion. Now, you know how to do devotion. Some of you do it extremely well with your kids. 
You will go to no end. There's no end to, to what you will do. You will go where? You will sit in freezing cold weather watching kids kick a ball around on a soccer field. Am I right? That half of them don't even know what team they're on, it seems like. You know. And, and you will sit there and, and you'll endure that because you're committed. And, and some of you, you're very committed to your spouse. It, it makes no difference what's going on. You will drop everything for them. And, and others of you, it's your job. You are very committed. All the boss has to do is say, hey, we need to do this. And you're like, I'll make it happen. Others of you, it's sports. You know, you do not miss a game. If a game is happening, you are in front of the television. Others of you, it's your TV show. You will sit there and watch show after show after show after show. Get the whole season in in one night. <laughs> you know? So we know how to do devotion. Paul says, now just take that and direct it toward prayer. Just take that same attitude and have that toward prayer. Because some of us, what happens is, is prayer's not like that for us. Some of us, it's distracted. You know, we're, we're like praying for about 15 seconds. And then we're thinking about something else. Or, or we just don't know the words. We, we run out. Or, or we don't devote the time to it. Or for some of us, we're, we're just wondering, does it even really matter? Because I don't know that God's really paying attention. And that he's really going to do anything if I ask. I want to encourage you today in regard to prayer that this book is full of people who prayed. And, and they got results. And God spoke to them. And God challenged them, came into their life, gave them a word that they couldn't get anywhere else. And it was powerful. I mean, the book of Psalms alone, which, by the way, we're going to do a series on the Psalms this summer and just, just cover a bunch of them, not 150 of them, uh, but we will uh, cover several of them, and I'm excited for that series. But, but here's the thing about the Psalms, is, is if you look into them, they're, they're, many of them are like prayers, and it's funny because even in the same psalm, sometimes it's like, God, you are there. God, where did you go? <laughs> Have you ever read the psalms? I love them. I love them. Because I don't know about you, there's times I've felt that way. I'm like, that guy gets me. I, I, or I get him. I, I don't know what you did. I guess he came first. So, I, you know, I, I understand that. And God says he's not bothered by our questions. Here's what he wants. He wants to just hear from us, right? It's kind of like your kids. You, know, you just want to hear from them. And Jesus, who was the son of God in the flesh, prayed a ton. One thing, I just think if Jesus prayed a ton, how much should I pray? Because I am not Jesus. Come on, somebody. You're not either, right? And, and so we should pray all the more. And, and the disciples one day, when, when they could have asked, Lord, how do you preach? How do you teach? And people get so much out of it. You know, Lord, how do you, like, touch people and their sickness leaves them? Maybe those are questions you would have asked. But here's the question they asked. Lord, how do you pray? Could you teach us that? 
Could, could you teach us that part? Because we really need to know, I think, how to pray. Listen, maybe write this down. If you can worry, you can pray. Some of you are great worriers. <laughs> you would be great prayers, okay? Praying people who just pray like crazy, just redirect that. And, and take it to the Lord. Here's what James, again, the brother of Jesus. It's amazing. The brother of Jesus. Here's what he says. James 5, 14, when, and when he's talking about prayer. Is anyone among you sick? Maybe there's somebody dealing with an illness today. Let them call for the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they've sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other. And what else should we do with each other? Pray. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. Why? Because the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Here's how we should pray. Here's when we should pray. James said, pray when you're in trouble. Do you have any trouble in your life? You know, the car's not working well. You know, the kids aren't working well. Or the marriage isn't working well. Uh, is the job not working well? Do you just feel overwhelmed? at times, and, and you don't even know exactly why. You know, why is today more than yesterday? What, what, what is it that triggered it? What is it? Here, here's what James says, pray. And you know what else he said? Pray when you're happy. Pray when you're happy. You should acknowledge the blessings of God upon your life. How many can say today that God has indeed, at one time or another, blessed your life, right? So, so we thank him, we thank him. And then he says, hey, if you're sick, guess what? It's not the last resort. A lot of times we say, well, all we can do now is pray. Is that what, really? <laughs> you know, okay, it's come to this. <laughs> We're going to have to get the Lord involved. <laughs> Maybe we should have got him involved first. <laughs> first response instead of last resort. Jesus paid the price for you and I to reach out to him by his stripes. We are healed. And then he says, if you have sin in your life. Now, I'm talking about the church down the street right now, right? <laughs> not, not here. But, but some of us, maybe, somebody watching online, all right? We, we have sin in our life. Come on, let's be real. We all deal with it. Hello? And he says, here's what you ought to do. You ought to pray about it. And I just want to announce to somebody today that this place is a safe place. If you are a sinner, you are more than welcome here. You're one of us, all right? <laughs> now, now, that's not our goal, <laughs> okay? So don't get too happy, all right? Because it only lasts for a season, right? We, we get that. But, but here's the thing. Is it's a place of freedom where I can come just like I am. And that's the people who came to Jesus who were not like Jesus. But they were accepted by Jesus. And they found freedom instead of judgment by Jesus. And the same thing is here today. Second thing to write down, not only pray diligently, but here's what he says next. He says, you need to stay alert. He, he says, you need to have an alert 
mind. We talked last week extensively about the mind. If you weren't here last week, I would encourage you to go back and hear episode one, okay, uh, of this series. But, but here he says we need to stay alert. Notice in Luke chapter 12, here's a story of Jesus. It says, Jesus turned to the crowd and he says, when you see clouds beginning to form in the west, here's what you say. Well, here comes a shower and you're right. Verse 55, when the south wind blows, you say today's gonna be a scorcher and it is. Now notice this. You fools, you know how to interpret the weather signs of the earth and sky, but you don't know how to interpret the present times. Here, here's the thing, is you and I need to get good at interpreting where I'm at in my life. What, what's going on? Kind of look introspective and, and, and say, now, why did I get mad about that? Why did I get so upset? Why did I flare up like that? Because have you ever had this where, where you know, and this, this is funny, especially if you're married, where, where you think you said, oh, turn here. <laughs> and they're like, uh, no, that wasn't quite how that went. <laughs> it was more like, turn here. <laughs> Anybody? Right? But in your mind, it came out so sweet, you know? It just, you know, it's just, oh, dear, would you do this, please? You know, that's not quite how that went. And, and here's the thing, is, is some of us, we interpret things, just like, you know, if you're in your car, you're listening to K-Love or whatever, and all of a sudden, eh, Nah, nah, nah. Turn that up, right? Because there's a weather alert. And we want to see, are they going to name Hendricks County in that? And this is what Jesus is talking about. He says, when you hear that, nah, 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 you turn up the volume. You're intrigued. You're interested. And he says, that's the way you need to be about what's going on in your life. Not just the weather, but what about the weather of your life? What about what's going on? What storms are on the inside? I'll tell you this. I think that some of the storms on the inside are scarier than the ones on the outside. And so what we need to do is do what Peter says. Look at this in verse 5 or verse 8 of chapter 5, 1 Peter. Be alert. So Peter joins Paul in saying this. Be alert. And again, of sober mind, just like we talked about last week. Why? Your enemy. How many know you have an enemy? The devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He says, you need to understand somebody's out to get you. I don't know if you watch some of these cop shows. I kind of like watching cop shows. And, you know, sometimes they'll be in a stakeout, right? And, and they're sitting there. And usually this is when the romantic part starts getting going, you know, and kind of stuff like that. Because uh, they're sitting in the car and uh, or sitting in the van and waiting and waiting and and you know and then all of a sudden somebody will say oh I think I see movement you know well what would happen if they said you want a cheeseburger <laughs> kind of in the mood for a cheeseburger let's go let's go down the road here some of the best cheeseburgers in town are right down right here and he's not coming out anyway right now. Let's don't worry about it. We'll be back in no time. What if they left their post and that's exactly when the action happened? Wouldn't be good, would it? And that's what Peter's talking about here. He says, if you leave your post, if, if you're not watching, 
if you're not careful, at that very moment, the enemy will sneak in on your marriage. He'll sneak in on your kids. He'll sneak in on your finances. He'll sneak in on your emotional well-being. And he'll lay a trap for you. And the next thing you know, you're messed up. You're messed up because you didn't realize your mission. You are on assignment. See, I, th I think some of us, we, we don't realize that we're here for a purpose. You, you're here for a purpose. And if you don't know your purpose, I, I'll, I'll just put a plug in here for a growth track. Starts up next week in May and, 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 and or, or in a little over a week, I guess it is, right? Help me out. Somebody knows the calendar better than I do. All right, so two weeks from today, growth track starts up in May. Just give May to growth track and, and go and discover your gifts, your callings from God and get involved in God's mission for your life. And, and guess what? When, when you're on high alert, the enemy can't sneak in as easily. When you're living on mission, and some of us, you, you may not be good at this, but I'm telling you, you can get good at it. You, know, you, you can get good at, at watching for things because how many know you have triggers? How many know the person next to you has triggers, right? <laughs> so, because you know... You know how you can push those buttons or whatever. And, and so what are those destructive things in your life? You, know, you, you can't just live your life on autopilot because how many know no one ever said, I just drifted into greatness? <laughs> right? No one said no one Be, because it doesn't happen. See, what happens is if you're drifting, you're going to miss crucial moments, crucial points and times in your life, in the life of your kids, in the life of those you care about uh, around you. And you're going to miss moments for yourself. Some of us miss moments because we're, we're just going on autopilot. You know, I just, oh, life's so stressful. You know, I just try to get through the day. I'm, I'm just like on an autopilot these days. I, I'm just trying to get through. And, and here's what happens. You're getting good at pushing down things that ought to be brought to the surface. That James says, we ought to confess it. Because if you don't confess it, you'll explode it. <laughs> How many know that? Eventually, it'll... It'll pop out in a negative way in your life. And again, it's your job to take care of your soul. It's your job to take care of your soul. As a matter of fact, turn to the other person, your second choice <laughs> that, that you didn't talk to earlier, and uh, tell them it's still your choice. It's still your choice. All right, Colossians 4.2 says, here, here's the third thing, pray diligently, stay alert, and here's the third thing Paul prescribes. He says you should be grateful. Be grateful. Now, if I said how many want to be a grateful person, I think every hand would go up, right? We all want this in our life. But here's the thing about gratitude. It's a choice. It's a choice. You, you don't just say, well, I'll be grateful when my ship comes in. <laughs> yeah, I'll be grateful when things turn around in my life. I'll be No, gratitude is a choice. It's a decision. And, and again, we don't drift here. And it's more than thank you. You know, how many of you, you teach your kids, you know, and I see parents doing this all the time. When, when somebody hands them something, they'll say, no. Well, you say, right? And, and if your kid embarrasses you, 
That's just like, mm, right? And I, do not do this to me in front of my friends right here, you know? And we're like prompting them, thank you, you know? Come on. But here's the thing about that. That thankfulness, it is because of a gift that's been given to us. But real gratitude is from the heart, not a gift. Nobody has to give me something today in order for me to be grateful. No one has to give me anything. Real gratitude just comes from a heart of thanksgiving unto the Lord. Here's 1 Thessalonians. Paul, again, writing from prison. Here's what he says this time. He says, rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Listen, it's more than a good idea. It's God's will for you. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I want to know God's will for my life. I'll tell you God's will for your life right now. I got it. I've got God's will for your life. Be grateful. That's what it says. If you want to be in God's will, be a grateful person. And you know what? You're in God's will. Because God desires for his people to be grateful people. And, and so just think about, I am grateful. Because here, here's why we get stressed. We think about what's negative going on in our lives, right? And we think, oh, this, this, oh my gosh. And I forgot about that. And oh man, I got this next week and whatever. And oh my goodness, look in the mirror. I'm getting older too. <laughs> you know, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> and, and so, so we, we, we have all this going on. And, and here's what Paul says. Why don't you make another list? Why don't you think about what you're grateful for today? Thank you, Lord, that I got up this morning. Thank you, Lord, that my alarm worked. Thank you, Lord, that the coffee was good. Thank you, Lord, that, that the shower was hot. Thank you, Lord, for the fact that I could drive here today. I didn't have to walk to church. I drove to church. Thank you, Lord, for all the good things that you've brought into my life. Maybe some of you should start a gratitude journal. There are a lot of people who do this. That just Every day, write down at least one thing that you're grateful for. Maybe you need to have a gratitude song that you can just play whenever and, and just start your day with a song and, and just a song of praise unto the Lord. I know a lot of us, you know, there, there are pressures today that come into our lives. And some of those we can't control. Like, I, how many remember 2020? Anybody? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a few that really, really remember. And... Um, you know, we had this pandemic going on. I'll confess, it was the first worldwide pandemic I've ever been a part of, okay? I'd never been a part of a worldwide pandemic before. And uh, so everybody had an opinion, <laughs> but very few people really knew answers. And as a public figure, as a leader, uh, it was a very difficult time because, you know, we were asked by the governor, hey, you know, churches, I know, you know, we're not supposed to step on you guys and whatever, but boy, it'd be great if you didn't bring everybody together into one big room, you know? And so if you could just do this different for now, and we're going to figure it out. And so we wound up, we, we were meeting, and, and we went online, which was the greatest thing that came out of that, because now at least one to five people get saved every week online from Crossroads Church. 
And it may be you today, all right? It may be why you tuned in. And, and so uh, here was the thing is, is there are some people saying, well, I don't know we're not, why we're not meeting already. <laughs> well, I'd be getting back. Government shouldn't be telling us what to do. <laughs> and then other people are saying, oh, my God, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not making light of this, but I'm just saying, people were genuinely scared. And, uh, and, and so it's like almost two people sitting up here, you know? And, and so I'm like, uh, I don't know that I can make any choice that's not going to offend somebody. I, I don't think there's any decision that I can make that's not going to offend somebody. If I choose this, this, this bunch, of, they're going to clap. But if I choose that, this bunch is going to be disgusted. And if I choose this, they're going to clap. But this bunch is going to be disgusted. Hello? See, you thought you had problems just running your family during the <laughs> pandemic and whatever. Okay? And, and so... That was going on, and some other thing, and of course, you know, the, the stress of, you know, uh, is, are people, are they going to give if they're not here? You know, is that really going to happen? And, and then we had our credit stolen uh, personally as well, and found out about that, and a whole big deal with that. That was, that was a lot. And... Um, then, then I just, honestly, I was getting irritated and, and stressed and, and different things. And, and here's the thing that, that really helped me is to be grateful. Thank you, Lord, that we made it another week. Thank you, Lord, that we made it another week. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, that this church is so incredible. Not only did we pay the bills during the pandemic, we raised an extra $10,000 to buy the equipment so that we could live stream when we did come back in person. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Lord, I got my credit back too, you know? Thank you for that. And, and so you, when you just start being grateful, again, you may not feel grateful. I'm not asking you, do you feel grateful? Paul's not saying that. I don't know that he felt grateful, but he chose to be grateful. He chose to be grateful. See, gratitude is not a feeling. It's a decision. It's a decision. Choose to be grateful. And you know what? When you choose to be grateful, here's what I've noticed. It pulls weeds in your life. It pulls weeds. Like the weed of worry. That weed starts to die when you get grateful. Jealousy. When you're jealous of other people and their life and all, if you get grateful, it, it'll pull that weed right out. If you've got anger in your life, it's hard. Just try this. It's hard to be angry and grateful at the same time. I'll tell you what else. It's hard to be fearful and grateful at the same time. Because gratitude inspires faith. And when you're complaining, you're going to be miserable. Look at this. In verse 3 of Psalm 77, it says, I complain and my spirit is overwhelmed. When I complain, I get overwhelmed. Paul could have done this. He had all kinds of problems. He's been shipwrecked. He's been beaten. He's been left for dead. He's had all kinds of things happen to him. He's had a hard life, a hard life. But he learned a secret in Philippians 4, 11, and then we're going to close. It says, I'm not saying this because I'm in need. So don't think that. Now, he's writing from prison again. How many think Paul did a lot of time in prison, right? <laughs> Some of you can relate to Paul, okay? 
for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. So this is not a guy who, you, you say, well, he can't relate to what I'm going on. Oh, yeah, he can. And I know what it is to have plenty. But I've learned the secret. Somebody needs to learn the secret today of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Paul says, my gratitude, my life is not based on the circumstances. It's based on Christ, on Christ alone. So I think God is in heaven saying, don't wait to be grateful. Start it today. Start it today. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Not I feel like it. No, it doesn't matter what I feel like. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I, I like what the scripture says. It says, yet will I praise him. How many have had some yet will I praise him days? You know, I had this go wrong. I had this happen. I had this happen. I had this happen. I was getting off the plane yesterday to be here. And, and when I was getting off the plane, they couldn't get the door open. And I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm sitting there. Oh, we landed on time. Because how many know that's a blessing right there? Just, just land on time, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. And then... They cannot get the jetway to connect properly to the plane. Some of us were saying, let us slide out. We will slide out of this plane. Not too good to slide out of this plane. Get a ladder, somebody. And, and it wouldn't happen. But listen, Paul says, yet... Will I praise him? Let, let, me, let me just illustrate it today. How many can have a complaint list, right? Got your complaint list of things, you know, that are going wrong in my life and whatever. And let me, oh, have you got five minutes to sit down? But here, here's what I was thinking about in this message. Is what if we flipped it? What if instead of having a complaint list, you had a gratitude list? You know, what, what if you said stuff like that? I'll, I'll just read a few that I wrote down. I'm grateful for traffic. <laughs> because that means I have a car. I'm grateful for property tax that keeps going up <laughs> because it means I have a house. I'm grateful for my water bill because it means I can turn a lever, a lever inside of my house in multiple rooms of my house and get water. I, I'm grateful for my electric bill that keeps going up <laughs> because I have this little plastic switch that I can just walk in a room and flip and lights come on. I, I'm grateful when I have to buy a bunch of contacts because that means I have eyes that can see to put them in. I'm grateful. Let me read one more. I'm grateful for the last parking spot. Because that means I can walk. See, today, what do you need to be grateful for? 
What do you need to start praising the Lord for and say, God, thank you that I have arms to lift to you today, that I have hands, I have palms that I can turn upward to you and praise you and thank you. Thank you for a voice that I have today to be able to praise you, to sing your praises. Thank you, Lord, that even though life gets tough, you are real in those times, maybe closer than any other time in my life and more able to produce great things in my life during those pressure moments than you would in other moments. And Lord, you can take our miscarriage. Lord, you can take our battle with sickness. Lord, you can take our difficulties in our marriage. Lord, you can take those hard times in our health and you can use it to bless somebody else that's going through some of the same stuff. Come on, let's praise him today. Let's give him the honor, the glory, the worship that he deserves from our lives. Let's pray. Father, sometimes we get out of alignment and our eyes get attached to things that are not going to last. And sometimes what happens is we fail to see the good things in our life because we get overwhelmed by the bad stuff. God, help us to learn Paul's secret. Help us to learn that we don't have to succumb to the stress. We can overcome it through your power. Maybe you're here today and you say, Craig, I needed this message today because I deal with stress in my life, but today I want to get over stress. I want to get over it. I want to pray more instead of not being able to pray or not thinking about prayer. That's, I want to have that to be my first thing that I go to. And I want to make sure that I have an alert mind. I want to stay alert. I want to be aware of what's triggering me, of what's causing this in my life. And most of all, I want to be a person of gratitude, a person who has praise on their lips because we can overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So I'm asking God to help me today to do these things, to line up my life so that I can be more than a conqueror. If that's your prayer today, would you just raise your hand all over this room? Say, yes, yes. Today I overcome, I overcome, I overcome. Father in heaven, I thank you that you're able to give us the victory over every circumstance and situation. God, it doesn't mean that... that Necessarily, we're going to get out of prison just like Paul. It may mean that we're going to have to stay in there and write some more letters. But God, you used those letters to bless people now for 2,000 years. To minister to people still today. God, would you use our difficulties? Would you use our challenges to bless people for even decades to come? While we're still praying, maybe there are those of you that have never really fully surrendered to God. Maybe the reason why there's so much stress in your life is because the sin in your life is still in your life. And the only remedy for sin is the Savior. And if you've not accepted the Savior, if you've not received God's forgiveness through a relationship with Jesus Christ today can be that day. Maybe you're coming back to God. Maybe you walked away and today you just need to come back to him, whatever the situation may be. But you know you need God to liberate you, to free you of sin, to liberate your life of guilt, to enable you to know that you have a home in heaven. If you need that in your life today, would you just raise a hand and say, yeah, that's me. That's me this morning right here in this room. Yes. And online, just type the word decided in the chat, the word decided. We're going to be praying for you. As a matter of fact, everybody pray this prayer after me. Just pray it out loud so those around you will pray it as well. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus 
to die on the cross for me, to pay for all my sin. And I know I've sinned, but I want to start over. So as much as I know how, I surrender my life to you. Thank you for coming in and changing my life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's celebrate those who prayed that prayer here or online. Listen, you can take a next step from where you are today, or you could take a next step in their next steps room right across the hall over here as well. Here's what I want to do right now for this live audience here is I want us to sing another worship song because it'd be easy to just go on, eat some fried chicken or whatever, and uh, just go on about our day. But maybe you could start a new habit today. Maybe before you leave, you could say, you know what? I'm not going out of here the same way I came in. I'm not doing that. I'm going to put on a garment of praise, the way the Bible talks about. I'm going to put that garment on today. And I'm going to put praise in my mouth. And it's going to, this first day of the week, it's going to be the start of a whole new week, a whole new me, of a person of gratitude, a person of praise. So I want us to stand and I want us to sing this. And if you need to be free from stress, I don't mean that you're not going to have hard times and hard situations, but what I do mean is you're going to have a new attitude about it. And I remember when Rochelle was dealing with stress, she, she stepped out, came down to the front, and it was like a, a movement, okay? And I know you think, well, I don't need to do that. Well, I don't know if you do or not. What I do know is, is when you draw close to God, He will draw close to you. That's what I do know. So today, if you need to draw close to God and say, I am not walking out of here with this stress. I am not walking out of here with this heavy weight on me. I'm not walking out of here the same way. As we're worshiping the Lord, I want you to come, just stand across the front. We're going to have a closing prayer. Believe God to touch you today and that you'll never, never, never be the same again. Come on, let's sing this and let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah to the one who came and made so step way. out.
you, God. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. Lift your hands up. Some of you maybe need to look at them because you don't always do this, all right? And just say, I need to do this more often. I need to do this more often. Because you know what? It, it's kind of a release, isn't it? You know, just, just give it. There, there's a verse Peter says, cast your cares. We looked at that verse last week. Cast your cares upon me. This just a release. Just say, Lord, I'm releasing. Say it out loud. Lord, I'm releasing all my stress to you. All my anxiety to you. From this point forward, I want to be a person of praise. I even want to thank you in advance before it even happens. Lord, let praise be on my tongue. Instead of complaining, let me be praising. And I believe that as of today, my life will be changed. I'm a new person in Christ Jesus. From today forward, I'm gonna be different because I'm releasing all my anxiety to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now praise him. Yes! Yes! Let it go, 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 let it go. Hallelujah. Let me pray a blessing over you. Father, I pray. Mm. I just had a picture of the enemy like a prowling lion trying to sneak up on somebody. Tell them it ain't gonna happen. That's not gonna happen to you. You're gonna be just as messed up this week as you were last week. I wanna tell you that enemy is a liar. That's all he can do, Jesus said. That's all he can do. He just lies all the time. And today, I want you to slam the door on the devil. Slam the door on that voice in your life. Because as of today, in Jesus' name, I pray blessing. I pray power. I pray presence. I pray, Lord, that you'll saturate the car, that you'll saturate the house, that you'll saturate the apartment. God, let the whole apartment building feel your glory. And not just in one, one apartment, but the whole building, God. I pray that your, your glory would just manifest in every cubicle this week, in every office space. God, in every school space. I, I pray wherever we are, God, that we would be carriers, carriers of your presence. And that, God, we would be people of praise. People of praise. Oh, how we need more people of praise today. And, God, we believe that it'll, it'll show up on our countenance. It'll show up in our lives. And so I pray these blessings over your people today. A new and fresh anointing. A new and fresh breath of the Holy Spirit. A new and fresh touch of your presence upon them today. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's shout one more time. 